Hey guys, in this video I will present a solution to Romania Masters of Mathematics shortlist 2019 problem A1. Firstly, we'll have a look at the statement, which asks to determine all functions f from the reals to real numbers, satisfying the following equation. For all real numbers a and b, f of a squared plus ab plus f of b squared should be equal to a times f of b plus b squared plus f of a squared. To begin with, I want to give this equation a name. Let's call it p of a comma b. So I defined p of a comma b to be just the equation which f should always satisfy. Here it is a good idea to set a or b equal to zero because in that case many of those terms are going to vanish. So let's take a look at what p of a comma zero tells us. And from this we obtain that f of a squared plus f of zero must always be equal to a of, of zero plus f of a squared. We notice that a only appears in the form of a squared inside of those f terms. And here we have a linear a term. And therefore, it might be a good idea to take a look at what p of minus a comma zero will give us, because in this case, both of these terms are going to stay equal. So we get f of a squared plus f of zero equals now minus a times f of zero plus f of a squared because again a squared is equal to minus a all squared and if we just take a to be some non-zero real number for example one then setting the left sides equal and subtracting f of a squared we get that f of zero equals minus f of zero or f of zero equals zero. And I noted this fact down here in orange so we can always remember it. Of course setting a equal to zero makes sense in our situation and for the same reasons. And p of zero comma b now tells us that f of f of b squared equals 2 0 times f of b plus b squared plus f of 0 which we now already know to be equal to b squared. Now we have gotten this step out of the way that we always want to do when confronted with such a functional equation on the real numbers. Let's now take a look um, more specifically at our equation p of a comma b and try to do some further tricks. Another strategy is to try to simplify function arguments. We see that on the left side we have three summons inside of f. To simplify this we might try setting a squared plus a b which equals a times a plus b to zero. And the two ways for doing so are setting a equal to zero which we have already done here and setting a plus b equal to zero. So let's take a look at the assertion p of a comma minus a. Then we are also going to get a term f of f of a squared on the left side which we already know how to deal with from here and the right side is going to give us a f of minus a plus a squared plus f of a squared. Since we know that the left side is equal to a squared, we can subtract a squared on both sides and also a times f of minus a to obtain that f of a squared is equal to minus a f of minus a. We see that we only have minus a terms on the right. Furthermore, we have already noted that minus a all squared is equal to a squared. Therefore, it is a good idea to plug in minus a for a into this equation, which then gives us f of a squared is equal to a f of a. This equation in itself is very useful, but we can also immediately see that we have equal left sides 
in this and that one, so we can set the right size equal to obtain that minus a f of minus a equals a f of a. For a not equal to zero, we can divide by negative a, which tells us that f of minus a equals minus f of a for all a not equal to zero. We have already established that f of zero equals to zero, and so this equation must also hold at a equals to zero. And so we can conclude that f of minus a is equal to minus f of a for all a. So far I have not gone into detail about our equation p of 0 comma b, namely that f of f of b squared equals b squared. Although this equation is really useful. Because we work in the real numbers, where the set of squares is exactly the set of non-negative real numbers, this equation tells us that basically f of f of a is equal to a whenever a is non-negative. And we can prove this, so we know that for all a greater than or equal to zero, we have f of f of a is equal to f of f of the square root of a squared. Now we can use this equation where we set b equal to square root of a to obtain that this is the square root of a squared or equal to a. To be able to use our previous equation, we would like to have a minus a term right here. So we can rewrite this as f of f of minus negative a and now use our formula that tells us that f of minus a equals minus f of a. So this is equal to f of minus f of minus a. And then we can use it once again, plugging in f of minus a for a into this equation, which then tells us that all of this is equal to minus f of f of minus a. Since minus a is positive, we can now use our first equation and therefore f of f of minus a is equal to minus a and thus all of this equals minus negative a or a. So we get the same identity for f of f of a regardless of the sign of a and we can conclude that f of f of a is always equal to a. What this equation tells us is that whenever we are in some kind of equality, for example p of a comma b, and we have some f of x where x is some variable, for example right here, where we have an a times f of b. Then we can substitute x for f of x, which will simplify our function a lot because we know that f of f of x will equal x again. Furthermore, when we take a look at our orange table, we see that this equation works really nicely with this trick. Because if we substitute f of a for a, then we're going to obtain on the right hand side an f of a times f of f of a, which equals a again, so the right side is not going to change at all. So let's try to see what this tells us. So we already know that f of a squared is equal to a times f of a. We want to use our substitution trick or reformulate it in another way, we can just rewrite this as f of a times f of f of a, which is now nothing but f of f of a squared. This equation appears in many functional equation problems. We have actually already made a video involving this functional equation f of f of a equals a that we link to here. It implies that f is bijective. Taking a look at our last equation, because f of a squared equals f of f of a squared, this implies the two arguments must be equal due to injectivity and thus we get a squared equals f of a Square. Now, we are also in a situation that is quite common for functional equation problems because we can deduce from this that f of a is always in the set minus a comma a. We are not done yet 
This does not imply that f of x is always equal to x or that f of x is always equal to minus x. But to prove that those are indeed the only two possible solutions, let's assume that there exist real numbers x and y such that f of x equals to x and f of y equals to minus y. This is of course always true because f of 0 is equal to 0 and minus 0 and to make this a strong assumption let's also state that x and y should not be equal to 0. The way to go here is to plug in x and y into our original equation. But we see that then we are going to have terms of the form f of y squared and f of x squared and so we want to first evaluate them and we already have a nice formula for that. And f of a squared equals to a f of a tells us that f of x squared is equal to x f of x or x squared and f of y squared equal to y f of y or minus y squared. Therefore p of x comma y becomes f of x squared plus xy plus f of y squared which equals to negative y squared is equal to x times f of y or minus xy plus y squared plus f of x squared which is equal to x squared. Here we have two cases for the sign of the last remaining f term. Let's take a look at our first case um, which is x squared plus xy minus y squared equals negative xy plus y squared plus x squared. Bringing everything to the right side, we get that 0 is equal to 2y squared minus 2xy or 2 times y times y minus x. Now we have assumed that y is not equal to 0 and therefore we get x is equal to y but this is of course a contradiction because then f of x is equal to x and f of x is also equal to minus x so x equals minus x which contradicts x not equal to 0. Our second case is that this function term right here is equal to minus x squared plus xy minus y squared which should be equal to minus xy plus y squared plus x squared. Bringing everything to the right we get 0 equals to 2x squared which of course contradicts x not equal to 0 and since we get a contradiction in both cases this assumption was wrong and therefore the only two possible solutions are f of a equals a for all a real numbers and f of a equals minus a for all a in R. We can plug both of these functions into p of a comma b and see that they actually work out and therefore those are indeed solutions to our problem and also the only ones and therefore we are done.